So here we are in conclusion, not just to today's lecture, but to part two of the course, which as you know, was about whether cultural differences in moral psychology can explain political conflict on climate change. And hopefully some of these ideas generalize to other forms of political conflict as well. Now, the plan was very simple. It was to work through a rather wonderful article by Feinberg and Willer, The Moral Roots of Environmental Attitudes. And we've done that. So I'm giving us a big tick. We've done that. At this point, I think you understand the main arguments of that article and some of the background to it. And you also understand how it attempts to answer this question. So as you know, I've been breaking it down into these five distinct claims. I think the argument hinges on these five distinct claims. Where are we with respect to each of the claims? The first one is that moral convictions and the emotions they evoke shape political attitudes. I think this claim is extremely well supported. This is extremely well supported. It's coherent with enormous body of literature and there's some evidence that specifically supports it. So that one I think definitely gets us the big old thumbs up. Now, the second claim, you'll notice that I formulated this quite carefully. So the claim here, I'm not saying, gosh, you know, moral foundations theory is true, right? That's a big old theory that makes all kinds of claims. What I'm essentially saying here is that we should go for moral pluralism. There are at least two fundamental domains of morality, which include harm based considerations and purity based considerations. Neither is reducible to the other. Neither of them is commensurable with the other. And again, I think that this claim has an excellent chance of being true. I don't say that we've got conclusive reason to accept it, but I think we've got sufficient reason to accept that claim. Show me that I'm wrong. Show me that I'm wrong. You Good, good. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, you will. That's exactly what I'm expecting. That's exactly what I'm expecting. Now, the third claim, I'm going straight to the orange here. I, I'm not even going to pretend because you know what I think about this. The claim is that liberals and conservatives possess different moral profiles. Now, what's interesting is that we have some reasonable evidence to think that the, at least in the social domain, socially liberal versus socially conservative, that sort of one dimensional structure has proven to be surprisingly useful across a wide range of different countries and cultural contexts. That's not to say that it's perfect. That's not to say that it captures the whole truth. It's just to say that, you know, whenever we're trying to find out things, we've got to balance uh, simplicity against, you know, complexity, I guess, simplicity against complexity. Greater complexity, we're likely to have something that's more accurate, but it may not be possible at this stage to make discoveries using a more complicated uh, model. So I'm very much in favour of the liberal, conservative, one-dimensional uh, model as a means for, at this time, discovering truth, even if it turns out that we can move past that. I hope that we will. But it does seem that the claim that the liberals and conservatives possess different moral profiles is not well supported by evidence. There are substantial theoretical and empirical objections to the use of the Moral Foundations questionnaire that provides the evidence. So if you look at Hyde and Graham and colleagues and their work and their reviews, it appears that there's just tons of evidence in favour of this. But actually the evidence that's really necessary, the evidence where you look at different cultural groups, you look at black people in North America, or you look at a population in New Zealand, or you go around the world and you look at 27 countries, there isn't evidence from those groups to support the idea that the Moral Foundations questionnaire allows us to compare mean values across different groups. And that undermines the claim that we know that liberals and conservatives possess different moral profiles. That's what we've seen. And that's not to say that this claim is false. There is probably something to this claim. I wouldn't be discussing it if I didn't think so. There is probably something to this claim, but I have to say that at the moment, I'm not convinced that we're in a position to know that it's true, that it's true. That's what I think we're missing. Now, this fourth claim is also problematic but in an even more interesting way. We do know that liberals tend to express greater levels of environmental concern than do conservatives across many different countries, not necessarily everywhere. Sometimes this pattern could be reversed, but this is generally speaking quite true, quite plausibly true, right? We did see, of course, that uh, in India, so in one country in India, uh, associating yourself with the more uh, conservative ideology 
actually makes it less likely that you're a climate skeptic. So that's interesting. But on the whole, that's quite plausible. The tricky bit is this because, right? Is it because liberals are more likely to view environmental issues in moral terms that they express greater levels of environmental concern? It's actually very tricky to get to the truth of that. I think there's some evidence that appears to support it, but that actually, that evidence seems to depend on the third claim being true. So I find myself in a very difficult position here. I genuinely don't know what to make of it. But you know what, that's not too bad because my job in a way is just to tell you what's out there. My job really is to just guide you to the various sources. You then come back to me and say, Steve, this is the right argument, this is the truth. And of course then I'm, my job again is to try and knock it down and to work out where the problems are. But eventually between us, I hope that we're gonna to get to the truth here. And in particular, I hope that you're gonna help me in the process of understanding how four might be true and known or whether it's just false and we should reject it, or replace it with something else. <clears throat> but here's the really interesting thing. When it comes to this final claim, if you expose people who are socially conservative to pro-environmental appeals based on moral concerns that uniquely resonate with them, then they will view envir the environment in moral terms and be more supportive of pro-environmental effects. And here's the curious thing, that's manifestly true. That's manifestly true. We have seen that validated again and again. And what's curious here is that it's got to be uniquely resonate. So it's not enough to put, frame things in moral terms that resonate with people who are socially conservative. In order to get this effect, it's got to be framed in a way that resonates with them, but not with people who are not socially conservative or less so with people who are not socially conservative. So that's a very interesting claim, very carefully formulated back in 2013 by Feinberg and Willer, has an excellent chance of being true. And that, of course, leaves us with this interesting puzzle. We've got an argument. We can see how the argument, if everything here was correct, would give us a positive answer to the question, do differences, cultural differences in moral psychology explain political conflict? If we accepted all of this, it would look like yes. We don't accept all of this, but we are in a position where it looks like the last claim which was justified theoretically by the earlier claims, turns out to be true. So we've got a puzzle. That's really what we're left with. We're left with the puzzle. Given that the evidence for cultural variation in moral psychology is at best weak, and given that the theoretical arguments for moral reframing are flawed arguments, why is it that moral framing seems to work? Now we've seen that the puzzle is not unanswerable. So there are ideas about the source of the message and there are ideas about how moral reframing might enhance fluency and so, so mean that messages are more easily believed. Uh, so there are potential answers to the puzzle, but to my mind, neither of those is likely to be the whole story here. So I think the puzzle should be, for us, minimally an open question. Now that's really the end of the lecture, but I do want to say uh, one thing, which is a bit more like a a personal conclusion. Now, generally speaking, I shouldn't do this, and I strongly discourage you from doing this as well, for offering personal reflections, but I'm going to violate this very strong rule myself. Now, what I think a lot of this research is hinting at is this. We have a choice between retaining our own moral purity, holding on to standards that we think are important, or mitigating the effects of climate change. It's not possible, I think, to do both. If even at this very late stage, we want to mitigate the effects of climate change, we need to recognize that political rivals, in particular those who deny that there should be effective measures to mitigate climate change, we need to recognize that they have differences in their moral psychology from ours. They value fundamentally different things. We should seek harder to understand the moral differences. Moral foundations theory does not enable us to understand the moral differences. It's a good tool, it's taken us so far. It's important, even its critics say that, but it doesn't allow us to understand moral differences. We need more and better tools. We also need, this is the personal part, to become more tolerant of differences in moral attitudes than we currently are, even to the point where we just need to move closer physically closer to some of our opponents. You're at a party and there's the far right uncle or far right aunt. I should go and stand by her, right, and talk to her. I'm at a party and there's the, you know, the loony, the loony lefty, uh, you know, the loony lefty granddad or whatever it might be. I should go and talk to him, right? I should go and talk to him. I should go and try and connect with him. But even if not connecting with him, I should just try to be physically 
closer to that person. I should try to overcome some of the ways in which we are intolerant of our opponents that prevent us working together for larger goals, sacrifice some moral purity, mitigate the effects of climate change.